Hello everyone, welcome to another video of mine, it's Double A, and this is another Chelsea transfer news video for you guys, where I keep you guys up to date with all the latest Chelsea news in the past 24 hours, and there's not been that much news. Um, I'm giving you guys all the latest updates, all the latest news, and a bit of talking point video. As we know, it is the international break, so the news, the news is very, very limited of Chelsea not playing, and we are not currently in a transfer window, the news is going to be limited, but I do my best to keep you guys um, you know, up to date with the content and all the news as well. Now, in today's video, I'll be speaking about Timo Werner, how he's been on fine form, scoring two last night for Germany. I'll also be speaking about Rüdiger's links to Barcelona. I'll also be speaking about N'Golo Kante and how could have could we see the return of prime N'Golo Kante after his superb performance last night? One of the best performances I've seen from Kante in you know the past two, three years. So we'll be speaking about his performance and the new leaked away kit for the 21-22 Premier League season. A new yellow kit potentially, we'll be speaking about that. But before I do get into it, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and leave me your thoughts, opinions in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's get straight into this Chelsea News Daily video. Now, starting off with the first piece of news, and that is really good to Barcelona. Now, there was some reports this morning, um, not too credible and reliable. The Sun was reporting it. There was some new reports on Daily Mirror and a couple of other journalists from English publications. But they're reporting that Barcelona are interested in signing Antonio Rüdiger as they are on the hunt for a centre-back. Now, Mustafi is also on the shortlist. So when you're seeing names like Rüdiger, Mustafi, um, you know, it is you are questioning it a lot, you know, for one of the biggest clubs in the world in Barcelona, you know, the stature, the pedigree that they have. When they're interested in players such as Rüdiger, Mustafi, you know, it is a bit suspect. But... What well, the report was basically saying is because obviously Chelsea and Frank Lampard have frozen Rüdiger out of the squad. Rüdiger has been, you know, surplus to requirements this season, had a lack of game time. And of course, there's other clubs circling for his season. Don't forget Rüdiger, he doesn't have a long contract either. As far as, you know, I'm concerned, as far as what the report state, his contract does expire in the next 18 months to two years or so. So he has limited time left on his contract. Um, you know, it's been frozen out by Frank Lampard. We have five centre-backs on the card. So, obviously, there are going to be three centre-backs, you know, not playing games. You know, Thiago Silva, Zuma. We've kept five clean sheets in the past seven games. So, there's no way back for the likes of Antonio really good to make his way back into the team, which is unfortunate. But, for me, it's the right decision. You know, I've always said that he's been our worst centre-back. I think, technically, he's not that very good. You know, he's mistake prone. He makes too many mistakes. He's aerially quite weak. I think Zuma is far superior to Rüdiger when it comes to aerial abilities and aerial jewels. I think Rüdiger, he makes too many mistakes and he's not an elite centre-back. You know, even when we signed him from Roma back in the day, you know, he wasn't even Roma's best centre-back. So I was always que I was always questioning the signing of him in the first place and he really hasn't done himself justice. I think he's been quite poor, um, you know, the past few years and I think it is really time to go for Antonio Rüdiger. Now, do I think this is reliable? Do I think that Barcelona are really in for Rüdiger? No, if I'm being honest, I don't think so. I do think Rüdiger will be leaving at the end of the season. Hopefully, fingers crossed, January because... It would be the best for all parties. It would be best for Chelsea because, of course, we save money on wages and, of course, we are going to get a transfer fee for him. And it's going to be beneficial for everyone to, you know, trim down the squad. It's going to be beneficial for Rudiger because he'll go on to a new challenge. He'll finally get some game time because at the moment he's been frozen out. He's just training. You know, he's not even making a bench. You know, that's how severe it is. You know, imagine not even, not just getting game time, but he's not even making, you know, the, the bench either. So it's quite sad for him. He's just training and, you know, picking up his weight. So for him... It's best for all parties if Rüdiger does move on. Hopefully, in January, he does move on. But I don't think Barcelona will be his destination. Like I said, I think Barcelona, you know, uh, speculation is legitimate. I don't think it's reliable or credible. And I need to see more publications reporting his story. But yes, Rüdiger could be on the move. I do sincerely believe that he will be on the move, whether it's either in the winter window or in the following summer. I do believe Rüdiger will be leaving, especially with Chelsea having five centre-backs on the card. But what do you guys think? Do you think we should give Rüdiger a second chance or... Do you agree with me in the fact that we should be letting Rüdiger go because he's simply not good enough for this football club? But moving on to some, you know, brighter news. Some brighter news. It's not news in sense. It's more of a talking point, and that is Timo Werner and Golo Kanté are two superstars that have had tremendous performances on international duty, especially last night. France they won one nil uh, against Portugal in a mouth-watering uh, international break game. Um, and Kante and Pogba ran the show, especially Kante scoring the match winner. But it wasn't the fact that he got the match winner, it was his actual overall defensive performance. You know, the ball progression, his passing was on point, had, you know, a very, very high uh, pass completion percentage. His interceptions were quite high, his tackling, his recovery of the ball, his moving in the final third. He reminded me of 2017 Kante. We saw the return of prime Kante last night. And if nurtured correctly, if looked after by Frank Lampard, and, you know, if he isn't playing every three days, and looked after correctly by Frank Lampard, we can see the best out of Kante. And credit needs to go 
to Frank Lampard and Chelsea and the staff for looking after and nurturing him correctly, hence why you saw the best out of Kante last night. Um, obviously, the season has been quite good. You know, he's been playing the athletic number 60 M position, and you will be seeing that in you know Lampard's new system that he's deploying with Kante in behind the uh, two attacking eights. Hopefully, you will see that for the remainder of the season if we can stay injury free. But I don't think Kante, with his age, you know, nearing the age of 30, with him being injury prone with his muscular injuries, I don't think you'll see him consistently every three days. But you know, every weekend you will see him there. Hence, why you know these Declan Rice rumours are intensifying. But N'Golo Kante was superb last night. Tremendous last night. You know, the stats speak for himself. But he was simply world-class last night. I was really, really happy with his performance. And me thinking that Kante was washed and finished, I made a mistake. And I don't want to get too carried away. And none of us should get carried away at all. Because, you know, it's early doors. We don't know, you know, if this is a one-off. Um, if Kante is going to put this performance in next weekend. It really remains to be seen. But... The positive signs are there. He was really good last night. And, you know, I'm really happy, really satisfied. Now, moving on to Timo Werner's performance. Again, a tremendous performance by him. as Germany dispatched Ukraine 3-1. Timo Werner getting a brace. Lovely stuff for him. He's already in fine form heading into the international break. And he's coming out of the international break with another two goals under his belt for Germany. So far this season, eight goals, eight assists in all competitions for him. Um, he's really been on fire, especially after the first few games where he hadn't scored. He's really finding his feet now. You know, he's our you know, number one penalty taker. His movement, his clinical finishing, his versatility, his moving in between lines, his pace, agility. You know, he's just, you know, he's an elite gunman. He's a world-class striker who's only going to develop and improve. You know, only being 25 years of age, he's not even hit his prime yet. So imagine Timo Werner in his prime. Scary stuff, I would admit. He's a world-class player. And I would like to see what Timo Werner can do for the next few years. I sincerely believe that he can lead us to glory. He can be our, our number nine, our goal-scoring, uh, you know, uh, forward that's going to take the team to places now for me like I said it wasn't just the fact he scored two goals but his overall performance was superb as well like I said his movement in between lines and half spaces his link up play as well that we've criticised him a lot for but he was superb he's you know he's improving every day his attributes are really good as well and yeah some really positive stuff from both N'Golo Kante and Timo Werner last night now moving on to the final part of this video let's talk about the leaked away kit for next season now what really baffles me with this is, number one, we ain't even seen the away kit. All we just know is yellow. Secondly, usually don't you see the leaked home kit before the away kit? So that was a bit confusing, but the per the publication report the leaked it are relatively reliable. It was leaked by footy headlines, and they are very, very reliable when it comes to leaking kits and get you know getting the kits correctly. And I was quite happy by this. Now, what we do know about the kit for next season is it's going to be yellow. So you do get the bit of... 2014-15 rise when we won the league. Uh, obviously, when Sari was here, our away kit was also yellow. We won the FA Cup back in 2010 with the yellow away kit. So the yellow away kit does bring this club, you know, good luck and good vibes. And I think that yes, with the yellow, it does, um, you know, essentially make a nice, you know, creative kit. It does look good on Chelsea. And I think that it will be a very, very nice kit. Uh, but again, we haven't seen any photos. We haven't seen any images. All we know so far is that the away kit is going to be yellow. So we'll have to wait and see. It's a bit odd, like I said, usually to see the leaked home kit, but we've got, we got the leaked away kit first, and we know it's yellow, but we don't know the images of it. It's quite confusing, but yes, there are rumours that yes, we already have seen the leaked away kit for next season, but I'm going to be wrapping up the Chelsea transfer news video for you guys. If you did enjoy this um, video, do smash like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and comment down below your thoughts and in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys for my next video. Peace.